Hi everyone, and welcome to another episode of Toasty Show. I'm your host Josh Berry. I'm Chris Pico. And today we have a special guest, Miranda. Miranda. So we're going to talk about um, some new movie trailers that are pretty wicked that we all just sat and watched and talked about. Miranda's going to show us a uh, video game, one of her favorites. And there's a couple of other geek topics we're going to talk about regarding movies and games and whatnot. Yeah. Movies, games, comics. Geek erections. Yeah. Every... Not for me, though. Down boy! Just erections on the right side of the room. Geek T-H-O. Yeah. Oh my god! G-T-O. Ha ha ha, yeah. Internet, don't say we never gave you nothing. Okay. Sherman, set the Wayback Machine for... Phantasm 5! V. I'm pretty excited just watching that. Yeah. I love, I love <laughs> the shots where it looks like they're going to explore, um, you know, like the room, like the portal room more. The, the, the world that the, little, the tall man comes from. Yeah, the little, the little hooded, the imps. hooded dudes, yeah. Yeah. Oh. I'm a huge Phantasm fan, if you can't tell already. <laughs> yeah, you have the, you have the... I have the sphere. The sphere, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Uh, I guess the story goes that... Um, the cast and crew of the movie have been like secretly guerrilla style shooting this movie for the last two years, and like they all travel together for the convent, the horror convention circuit, and they just whenever they have the chance and they get some money and they find a location that would work, they just kind of go over there and shoot without telling anybody, shoot the scenes that they need and get out. And they've been doing it for two years secretly, not saying anything to anyone online, so that when the trailer would come out, it would be a complete out of nowhere surprise. Uh, the only thing is that Don Coscarelli, who's directed every movie in the series so far, he did not direct this one. Um, but he, the guy that is directing it is like a protege of his, so he kind of oh. like passed it off to someone he says he trusts, who I'm, I think was a cinematographer that he's worked with for like John Dies at the End and Bubba Hotep, I want to say. Oh, nice. So he's worked with the guy before. He 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 says he's 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 the goods. Yeah. So he says he's left his, he's left his baby in, in good hands. That's cool. But, yeah, that trailer, goddamn. I mean, even though That's they don't cool. really show much, yeah. it's just they everything that it looks like we've been wanting to see in a Phantasm movie to wrap it all up looks like it's going to be in there. So, yeah. yeah, especially after the fourth one, which I could not stand. <laughs> well, and it's awesome, too, that, like, the all, all the actors Everybody. Are, are, like, all the original actors. Like, that's the worst thing about, you know, like, a, a movie series that everyone loves and you want to see it and it's, like, years and years later and then it's, like, half the cast is someone new or I think one of the reasons or... they wanted to make this right now was because the guy that plays the tall man, Angus Grimm, he's like 90. Yeah. And it's like, I think they wanted to get it done while he still has his faculties and he's still able to walk around and do all the things that need to be done for the movie. So yeah. that that's pretty awesome. That Every single actor that is that needed to be in this movie is in it. Every one of them. That's awesome. Even Kathy Lester from the first one who was that girl in purple. <laughs> you see her in the trailer like gliding yeah. through the mausoleum. <laughs> I was just like, holy shit, what's your fucking knife and giant tits? Do <laughs> you uh, have a release date for it yet? Uh, it just says 2014, which I'm assuming it might be a Halloween oh, release. That cool. would be the perfect time to release it. Oh, yeah. Um, I just hope that it does not become like one of these like direct to vod yeah. things. You know, where they're like, oh, there's going to be no audience for it. No, I mean, there's fans of, these, of this series that's been waiting for this for, what, part four came out like in 98? So, yeah, come on, yeah. almost 20 years, bitch, let's maybe, go. Maybe we'll, uh, Tug will send us... Oh, I would to totally tug box. the shit out of that fucking we'll thing. We'll tug the no. hell out of that movie. I will <laughs> tug something. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that they weren't done with it, that's pretty cool. Especially, Just the fact they were able to keep it a secret I know, for two I was, years. I was gonna say, like, that's, like, again, with, like, being in, like, the internet age, like, that's... You, people can hardly keep a secret about, like, anything. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's all over the place, but to be filming... And while they're going to all these conventions, so obviously they're around super fans all the time. And not and keeping their lips shut. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. Keeping, keeping their lips shut, you know, not letting anything slip. Because, you know, they probably do Q&As all the time. Like, 
How do you cover that up? Oh, we can only be here until 4 o'clock today because we're going to go shoot some more Phantasm 5. Yeah, I mean, it's just like not, <laughs> not saying anything, not letting anything slip in Q&As and like in panels. Like, you know, especially when you're in conventions, like there are crazy fans that will follow people. Like to be able to all like leave together yeah. and not have people follow you and like see where you're going and what you're doing. Like that's just really impressive. Like, and the fact like, that they never, and they've it. been grilla shooting this thing and they're like, they haven't been caught. Yeah. No one has caught any paparazzi pictures. I mean, I'm sure they don't have paparazzi problems. I mean, they're like nobodies in the, in the you know, the celebrity. You know, they're like Z-level celebrities. But still, I mean, even like horror blogs. But like, no one got like one have... fucking picture yeah. of it. Like, like, oh, I saw you know Reggie Bannister walking around in his ice cream man uniform. Where was he going? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> An ice cream man? Though? Yeah, I was like, what's he doing? Is he going to a convention? Apparently so. Okay, whatever. No, he was going to the set. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, impressive. Yeah. So, excited to see that when it goes out. Hopefully the theaters. Hear that, Tug? Where your, where your, where your peeps? We're, at, we're, we're, we're right here. It's happening. We'll, we'll go ahead and take that one In for the Chicago, Chicago area. I'll take one for the team for that. Yeah, we'll go ahead and take that one for the Chicago area. Sold Merkin. All right, so uh, in the first episode of Toasty, I ended the episode with some... It was an offhand remark, I would say. Yeah, I mean, it, it was words of encouragement to Square Enix, and uh, basically, here, we'll show you what I said. Really like to see Square Enix get in play again. Get like, their shit together! Yeah, get in play. Not this not this Final Fantasy Thirteen stuff. Get, get back into play. Mm -hmm. um, remember, it's... It's the 35, 30 to 35 year olds who are the reason why you guys are rich. Yeah. So <laughs> make a game for us, please. All right, welcome back. That's what I said. <laughs> I said that. He and said it a lot. And they listened. <laughs> so apparently, Square Enix, not just Square, has uh, come out and said that they kind of are sorry for yeah. what they've done. Like they're, they're not real happy with the way the uh, Final Fantasy games have gone. Either have we. So um, as fans, yeah. as fans, so they have said that they're going back to the old style, that they're done with the uh, the new trial that they gave it. I guess yeah, the um, whole overly cinematic. Yeah, beautiful you know, games, just yeah. Don't games, get me wrong, they're they're, 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 they're great to look look at, but they're not all that great to play. Yeah. So, so basically, they said they designed, starting with Final Fantasy X, I guess was the first one where they were trying to mess around with it, where it was like they're trying to not appeal to. JRPG fans. They were trying to make it so it was like globally acceptable. Mm -hmm. So it had a little bit of something in it for everybody. And it basically took away what made Final Fantasy Final Fantasy. Mm -hmm. it w who cares if it was fucking more Japanese than anything like we would have in the States? It wasn't. Right. Okay, that's why we were playing it was because we liked that it was different. Yeah. And then they started moving away from that and just kind of made it like acceptable for everybody. They just kind of like, you know, pussified their own, their own yeah. you know, style of game. And like every time they release a new game, people that are the fans of the old style just dislike them more and more. Yeah. And now that they've released this 3DS game called Bravely Default, which is a throwback to the way that their games used to be back in the day, starting with, like, I want to say, like, um, Final Fantasy 7 through 9 for the PlayStation 1, mm -hmm. that it has sold through the roof, and they're like, well, maybe that audience still exists. Maybe we yeah. should just go back and start doing things the way we used to because people aren't really happy with the way we've been doing things lately. Yeah. Why not? Like, Tim was the last one that I put... Like I, like I always tell you, I, I beat 10 once a year. Um, and so that was the last one. You're all about the blitz ball? Well, no, it's just 10 was the first one that I got to the end and wasn't strong enough to win. When I first, I put I put like 50 hours, kind of rushed through it. I was like, oh my goodness, didn't really enough. like it. And then I got to the end, I was like, I wasn't, I'm not strong enough to beat this guy. And after that, I was like, wow. You're kind of a cool game. <laughs> like, you just wasted a bunch of my life. <laughs> Let's I do it again. I can't even complete. Let's fucking roll this shit. Let's do this. <laughs> so after that, I started scumming a little bit See, more. See, now you got to play know, 12, then. Hung around, but... Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm really excited. It's a, it's just a cool... They listen to cool you. Game. They watch yeah. Toasty, and yeah, they're like, like, they're right. We're going to just like, do that. Yeah. We Maybe pushed they're on to something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I and thank you guys. I'll definitely be keeping an eye out for this. And maybe this Final Fantasy 15 that I saw that I could pre-order on Amazon for the PlayStation 4. Mm. Maybe, that's the, maybe that's the first step. Mm. <laughs> so, 
now, having just recently come back from Walt Disney World, because uh, as Chris knows, I am huge into all things Disney. I'm even wearing my new Mickey Mouse. She I, is. She I, is. I am. I really am. Uh, I brought one of my all-time favorite games that I discovered at some point when I was in college, so probably around like 2021, so about 10 years ago now. Um, one of my favorite games is the Walt Disney World Magical Racing Tour. One of the best games. Basically, if you could picture the most perfect game that is Mario Kart meets Disney, uh, that's this game. Although, as I was telling them, I think I like it better than Mario Kart 64. What? Heresy! I know, I know, I know. Them some fighting words, Goyle. Uh -huh. You have to understand that Mario Kart is one of my all-time favorite games, except for the Super Nintendo version, because Rainbow Road is so difficult. Um, That's awesome. It, yeah. But, um, <laughs> I love Mario Kart. I love all racing games. I particularly love Mario Kart and the 64 version. And when I found this game, I was like, great, it's a racing game. This is going to be amazing. It's Disney. I love Disney. Uh, it turns out I really enjoy it a lot more than Mario Kart. Um, I mean, graphics-wise, it's not as good. Um, but I think the levels, the way that they're built, um, the way that they incorporate the actual attractions at Disney World, um, is pretty magical. Forgive the pun. Magical mm. racing. <laughs> <laughs> it's all magical. Um, and since I haven't played it in so many years, playing it just a few moments ago, and have literally having just gotten back from Disney World, um, it's <laughs> really, really awesome. Um, so a game that I really like. Uh, some of the differences or some things that you'd be used to in a racing game uh, that they incorporate in this. When you race, uh, you get different weapons. Um, so even though it's a Disney game, you get to shoot at people. Um, instead of turtle shells or Koopa shells that you'd have in Mario Kart, uh, they are acorns because of the story focuses on Chip and Dale. They destroy the Not five. the strippers. Yeah. No. They're not. They're not strippers. Um, but Chip and Dale, they destroy the... I don't the... know. Dale walks around with his shirt open. Yeah, he does with no pants. Yes. He's, he's yes. Like, they're both exhibitions. Well, that's Chip. They're both exhibitions. Chip wears his jacket and no shirt. They both wear no pants. Yeah. They both they're wear... Both... Most Disney characters don't wear pants. Yeah, they're just free balling it. That's true. Yeah, it's just Very Magnum P.I. and Indiana Jones hanging together with no <laughs> pants. It's like a Hawaiian shirt. Really, dude? <laughs> He's the hip one. This right. is the hipster tail. Well, <laughs> the hipsters are on a quest because they not only destroy the Disney World fireworks machine, then they have to go on a quest and race around the park. Bastards! Yes. Always up to no good. They know, race right? around the park and find all the missing pieces of the fireworks uh, machine. So it's all four parks. They go through the Magic Kingdom, Animal Kingdom, um... It used to be called MGM, now I believe it is called uh, Hollywood Disney, but I still call it MGM Studios, uh, and Epcot. So all different rides, uh, anything from Space Mountain and Haunted Mansion, which is one of my favorite, one of the most difficult levels too is Haunted Mansion. It's pretty intense. It's the intense. Rainbow Road. It's the Rainbow Road of uh, Walt Disney World Racing. <laughs> Pirates of the Caribbean, <laughs> Dinosaur, uh, Test Track, Rock and Roller Coaster, which is great because I'm also an Aerosmith fan. Oh, and um, and yeah, Space Mountain, Big Thunder Mountain, uh, and Splash Mountain. So a really There's good, a lot of mountains. Really good. There's a lot of mountains. They have a monopoly on the mountains. They yeah, are actually. I disapprove. They're building a new mountain in Fantasy. Really? Land. They got all the mountains. <laughs> Uh, I watched them constructing it and welding it. It's almost done. It's probably going to open up in the summer. Um, lots of mountains. Just build a hill. It's really got to be a mountain. It's a mine. It's Snow White oh, mine. No. They're building it's a, it. It's a mine ride. It's going to be the Maleficent ride. Uh, no. Maleficent? No. Damn. You are thinking of the wrong princess. I get my princesses yeah, That would be they all. They all. Sleeping Beauty. You're Rapunzel's the, the mermaid? Yep, exactly, okay, cool. exactly. Um, so I do, yeah, I do it. I do it. Yeah, she's like the octopus. <laughs> but oh, Helga, the octopus lady. Yeah, that lady. <laughs> yes, Helga. <laughs> I won't even. I won't even start about the characters. But really cool. Um, you can unlock different characters. So you get a basic character. Some that you'll recognize, like Chip and Dale. Um, some that you won't recognize necessarily that they've kind of created for the game. Um, but you can unlock characters like Jiminy Cricket, the robot duck from DuckTales. Oh my god. That you can unlock. Um, so it's pretty cool. 
Uh, the levels are really challenging. They look and feel like the rides. They play the music from the rides. Uh, except for the rock and roller coaster, they don't play Aerosmith music. They actually they just play. The right they didn't get the rights for the game. Aerosmith draws a line somewhere. Yeah. Okay, we'll, we'll just play Revolution X instead. Yeah. I love that game too. Oh my god. Oh my god. We should do that. Oh my god. Is that we should the, totally date. Is that, is that the oh, CD ones? should we? No. Oh. <laughs> Great a game! It's a really, a really well. They had a lot of material. Made, yeah. yeah. I mean, like it's almost endless. There's so many rides that they could have put in that, that they didn't. So I wish they had. Yeah. Before DLC. Yeah. So yeah, that's a PS One. I know. Yeah, they could have the Harry Potter one on there. Right? Oh actually, shit, son! That's that's not Disney World. These two, I clearly don't know. <laughs> Harry between. Potter Mountain, Star Tours. <laughs> yeah. Um, although Mountain. I did just go to the Harry Potter park as well, the Wizarding World of See? Harry Potter. It was at Walt Disney. It was not at Walt Disney. Oh. That's at Universal Studios. Universal Studios is an awesome place. It is, yeah. I have been there. Yeah. I've never been to Disney then. Well, that's okay. Honestly, I was Disneyland when I was a junior in high school. I was probably in 91. Yeah, never been to Disney. <laughs> you should never, go. Never had that dream. It's a, you should go. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. I'm gonna go check it out. Yeah, Lake Josh Squee. But I found this in like a video store and I was like, what? Disney racing? Oh my god. So I got it, loved it. I uh, tracked it down on eBay. I think this was when eBay was still relatively new. Relatively new. They did not have a buy it now price. You, I actually had, you to, had to bid. I had to bid oh, on it. I remember doing that. I had to go constantly find a computer to go and make sure I hadn't been outbid yet because I didn't have a cell phone that would let me know that it's happened back then. Yes. Um, it's, so it's, it's a lot easier to use right now. Few yeah, intense was. days of trying to bid on this game, and I think I want. You know, I got it for like fifteen bucks. Um, and yeah, I just became a fan. Unfortunately, lost it when someone took it from me. Um, but we Bastard. managed to find another copy at our, our one of our favorite local uh, gaming stores. Uh, we guess people play games, right? Yeah, people play games in Chicago. Yeah, on uh, uh, Clark, go people yeah. play games. On Clark, uh, <laughs> really <laughs> close to Chicago Comics, um, really close to Wrigley Field. So if you're in the area. Um, it's amazing. They just have all these cool old games. This one was like in perfect condition, and apparently it's a collector's edition. And yeah, so there you go. Glad to, glad to have found it. I really recommend if you can track down a copy. I and there's a Dreamcast version too. Dreamcast version. Chris ordered and didn't get. Yeah, fuckers. <laughs> Um, I think I paid. It'll this. happen. It'll Actually, happen. I just peeled off the price tag from People Play Games. Um, this one was seven dollars, um, so it shouldn't be too hard to track down. I haven't seen it in many places. Yeah, I haven't seen it anywhere except so, for People Play Games. Yeah, it's. I guess it is hard to track down, but when you find it, it's not so rare that you're going to be paying. You know, it just might not have had. A, it might not have had a big circulation run. It might have been like yeah. a limited run. Um, but yeah, totally worth it, especially if you're big into racing games. Definitely if you're big into Disney. Um, you know, good game for kids too. The you know, it's not a lot of violence or sex. There's no. It's, it's kid friendly. It's kid friendly. Um, and what's the rating? But uh, E. It's rated E for everyone. C. But keep it real, Disney. Uh, All right, everybody. It's time for the wrap up. <laughs> We're dorks. Yeah. <laughs> it's clear that's yeah. why you do the show, right? Yeah. It's yeah. supposed basically. to be big dorks that talk about dork things because yeah. we're like... Because we're, we're like dorky. Because dork. yeah. we're dorky. <laughs> we just do it without a camera and we decided to put a camera in the room. So why not? Yeah. Mm. So yeah, um, so hopefully you enjoyed our show. Thank you for everyone who's uh, been supporting us and everything. It's been awesome. Thanks for subscribing. Yeah, subscribing. And um, start some chatter. Let's hear some chatter in the outfield. Get some chatter down there below and talk about, give us some ideas on some things you want to hear us talk about or maybe a movie that we've never seen that you want us to watch and then we can talk about anything. Just just talk. Something, yeah, anything that we've missed in yeah. the realm of geekdom. Or special girl perspectives that you want to hear. Yeah. Because oh she is our girl correspondent, you know. Yeah, I she am is. the token female. Mm. <laughs> so, yeah, let I us don't know. know. My breasts are pretty big, too. I'm pretty sure mine are better. Oh, yeah, you're right. Mine. So, all right. And, uh, and like. We'll, 
Yeah, like our right. Facebook page. The, the like. And the, oh, the, yeah. On the subscribe. Yeah, subscribe give us, and like this on YouTube uh, and on Facebook. Highlight a thumb for us. You know, give or, us the thumb highlights. Or two. Cool. And share. Yeah. We're not too far. Share. And share. Because share, sharing is yeah, what we're supposed to do. Sharing is what you're supposed sharing, to do. Sharing is caring. Yeah, sharing is love. caring. Yeah. All right. So we'll uh, see you guys in a couple of weeks. Bye. Bye. There's a surprise inside. See you next spring! You always were a clumsy fool.